rude awakening. You breathe in? Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs on today's show. I'll speak to the University of Minnesota climate science professor, Dr. Heidi Roop, about the recent climate extremes and fluctuations. But first, the news. I'm Eileen Alfandiri with KPFA News Headlines. The Tokyo Summer Olympics opened with cascading fireworks and made-for-TV choreography that unfolded in a near-empty stadium. Loud music overpowered the shouts of scattered protests outside the stadium calling for the games to be canceled. The Olympics are deeply unpopular in Japan, with 80% of the population opposing holding the games during the global coronavirus pandemic. Phoebe Amoroso reports from Tokyo. Recent polling suggests 68% of Japanese citizens doubt that the games can be held safely. They are concerned about the burden on the country's healthcare system, and many are angry about restrictions on daily life in Tokyo. The capital is under its fourth state of emergency, and Olympic visitors are forbidden from interacting with the general public. So far, more than 90 COVID-19 cases have been identified among athletes and officials at the Olympics since July the 1st. Phoebe Amoroso, Tokyo. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says new coronavirus cases surged 53 percent higher last week over the previous week. The White House Task Force coordinator said the largest number of cases are occurring in regions with the lowest vaccination rates. Alabama has the very lowest vaccination rate in the nation. The state's Republican governor, Kay Ivey, told reporters the blame for the new surge in cases is with people who refuse to get vaccinated. She called the vaccines safe and effective. It's safe, it's effective, it's, the data proves that it works. It doesn't cost you anything. It saves lives. Governor, you talk about, you know, the vaccine saving lives, but Alabama still is last in the country when it comes to vaccination rates. Besides, you know, this emotional plea you just gave us, what is it going to take to get people to get shots in arms? I don't know. You tell me. Folks are supposed to have common sense. But it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. Over the past two weeks, the rolling average number of daily new cases has spiked 280 percent in Alabama. Three Bay Area counties, Santa Clara, San Francisco and Contra Costa, are urging employers to require their workers be vaccinated before returning to on-site work. This comes as California is reporting more than 5,000 new COVID-19 infections in the last 24 hours. The U.S. spends more on its military than the next 11 countries combined, but that's not good enough for members of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Meeting behind closed doors, the committee voted to boost the Pentagon budget for the next fiscal year to $25 billion more than President Biden had requested. The total would be $740 billion instead of $715. An additional $40 billion is for a nuclear weapons program conducted by the Department of Energy. Earlier in the week at an open subcommittee hearing, Alaska Republican Dan Sullivan indicated he would be pushing for a larger military budget than what Biden had proposed. I have been very outspoken on my um, disappointment with this administration's top line budget. And I think particularly when they're funding other agencies at double digit increases they're cutting defense spending real numbers they are we need to change that that's our oversight responsibility and i hope we can make that a bipartisan vote in this committee to send a message shouldn't be cutting the department of defense's budget especially not now Sullivan referred to U.S. military competition with China. Biden's budget contained an increase of 1.6 percent for the Pentagon, which amounts to a slight decrease when accounting for inflation. Earlier this year, Senate Budget Committee Chair Bernie Sanders had called for a cut of $74 billion so the monies could be redirected towards social needs. The group Public Citizen called the $25 billion Pentagon increase approved by the committee outrageous. It said that, quote, not 
so incidentally, the $25 billion spending increase approved by the Senate Armed Services Committee exactly matches the cost to scale up COVID-19 vaccine production to meet global demand. Immigrants' rights activists are calling for congressional action after a Texas court ruled the DACA program illegal. The Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program gives undocumented residents protection from deportation and the right to work if they were brought to the U.S. as children. Vice President Kamala Harris met with some youths known as dreamers affected by the ruling. Christopher Martinez filed this report. Vice President Kamala Harris welcomed a group of DREAMers to the office of the Vice President. The meeting comes six days after a federal district court judge in Texas declared the DACA program illegal because it violated the Administrative Procedures Act. The ruling does not affect the more than 600,000 DREAMers who are already in the program and thus protected from deportation and allowed to work. But it does block the program from accepting new applicants. Harris says she and President Biden will fight for a path to citizenship. We have announced our intention to appeal the decision, and that is in process. And the Department of Homeland Security has announced that it will propose a new rule concerning DACA which is very important because that's about the enforcement piece. One of the undocumented youths that met with Harris was 18-year-old Diana Bautista of Los Angeles. She says she could not apply for DACA because then-President Trump halted the program a month before she became eligible. She thought things changed when Trump's action was later overturned in court. I was able to apply in December 2020, and I paid the $800 filing and processing fee happily. But the program was suddenly and cruelly canceled again last week because of a judge's order. Bautista says immigrants have kept the economy going through the pandemic, and she's calling on Congress to show up for them by passing immigration reform. I'm Christopher Martinez. There's been explosive growth in California's Dixie Fire, which may have been caused by PG&E equipment. It is now the state's largest fire and has burned 176 square miles in Butte and Plumas counties. Cal Fire said the blaze would rapidly expand to the northeast. It is 18 percent contained. The Tamarack Fire, which crossed the California border into Nevada earlier this week, is just 4 percent contained. Firefighters reported a spot fire east of Highway 395 at Holbrook Junction in Nevada was growing rapidly. Firefighters said they were experiencing exceptionally difficult weather and fuel conditions. Containment grew to 40% on the nation's largest wildfire, the bootleg fire in southeastern Oregon. With a forecast for the San Francisco Bay Area, partly cloudy morning skies and sunny. Highs in the mid-70s to mid-80s around the Bay, mid-90s well inland. In Fresno in the central San Joaquin Valley, sunny with a high of 102 degrees. I'm Eileen Alfandari. More news in 94.1 with headlines at noon, 3 and 4. Join us at 6 for the Pacifica Evening News. Welcome back. This is a rude awakening. We are in fun drive, folks, but we'll get back to that in a second because um, we're burning up here in California and it's flooding in Europe and this climate emergency is hitting the Western world on a level and an unprecedented level. And I felt it necessary to have a scientist talk to us about what is going on. We've got the wildfires here in California that start have started this year two months early. Two months early, folks. When we spoke last year, when I talked to you about it, it was, well, we're almost into, you know, that was in May. We're almost into the uh, fire season. Well, it has started two months early. Absolutely insane. Now we've got the, the flooding that's happening in Belgium and, and mostly in Western Germany as well as the Netherlands. So, Scientifically, what is going on and how can these issues be mitigated? Well, I've got Dr. Heidi Roop. I've got Dr. Heidi Roop. She is an assistant professor of climate science at the University of Minnesota. She studies climate change impacts and adaptation and works to develop actionable steps to combat climate change 
change. And that's what this show is all about. We're going to give you the bad news. We're going to smack you upside the head with the facts, but we want to give you some solutions. So we've got Dr. Heidi Roop. Dr. Heidi Roop, thank you so much for being on A Root Awakening. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, let's start with, of course, what's happening in Germany. There's flooding in Western Germany and parts of Belgium, Austria, and Netherlands, like I already said. Um, the heart, the heart of Europe has been hit hard. Let's start with getting an understanding of the regular climate patterns in that region. And then let's drill down into what has been exacerbated because the climate has changed. Great. Well, you know, I think to, to touch on what you started with at the top, I mean, we are living in an era of extremes. Drought on one side of the globe, flooding on another, and in some cases, we're living both of those impacts simultaneously um, in the same region. So we are needing to learn how to cope with uh, this sort of quote-unquote new normal, this era of extremes. And this summer has really put that out um, front and center across many countries, um, including, as, as you've said, um, the sort of heart of Europe in Germany. Um, I think a lot of my German colleagues right now um, who are active in thinking about how to both mitigate uh, the impacts of climate change, that is by reducing the root cause, that's reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases um, that are causing the warming and then translate into this shifting towards these extreme conditions, um, as well as sort of very front um, and center in leading the conversation around how it is we prepare for the impacts that we know we've already set in motion. We know in the scientific community and in the policy community um, that we have committed to change. We are expecting um, these extremes. We however, need to really embrace not only the rapid reductions of emissions, again, this root cause, um, but also really putting a priority on how to prepare our communities for these impacts, whether it's wildfires or extreme flooding. Um, in this context in Germany and, and surrounding countries that have been experiencing flooding and you know, catastrophic loss of life and property, um, we know that climate change um, leads to a warmer, wetter atmosphere, meaning there can be more rainfall, more moisture held in the sponge that is our atmosphere. Um, and there's new research out that's showing a clear connection between the slowing down of these storms, meaning that heavy sponge that's sopped with more moisture because of this warmer atmosphere sort of stays stagnant over an area, a small geographic area for longer. And so that sponge is being continually squeezed over a smaller area. And this can lead to um, this catastrophic flooding um, where you have intense rainfall, filling your streams and increasing the risks of um, flash flooding and this sort of extreme flooding that we're observing unfold right now. Wow. Okay. So it's instead of it coming, doing its thing, raining or what have you, or, or maybe a storm or two, and then moving on, it's just staying there. That's what you're saying? That's right. The atmosphere is sort of configured in a way um, in this most recent event in Germany, mm -hmm. there are sort of high pressure systems that sort of held these storms in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And so while this specific storm has not yet been attributed to climate change, we have a whole field of study called attribution science that looks at specific individual events and their climate connections. What we do know more broadly is that not only do we expect these extremes to occur more regularly under climate change in a climate changed world, um, we know that this warmer atmosphere holds more moisture, and we are also observing and able to project in the future that these storms are sort of slowing down. They're becoming more intense, and they're also slower moving. And so, um, there a new paper actually published just last week um, projects that these types of slow moving storms uh, may be up to 14 times more frequent across land areas in Europe by the end of the century. That is by the year 2100. Um, mm -hmm. That, of course, these slower moving storms increase the amount of rainfall that accumulates in a, a given location. And this translates into an increase of the risks of floods and these sort of catastrophic floods um, that we've seen occur in Europe this year. 
Wow. Oh my goodness. So what you're saying, and because of this particular type of science, the attribution science, which is a field of research largely used in climate studies, it seeks to test whether and by and how much climate change may be responsible for certain extreme weather events, such as droughts, extreme flooding, hurricanes, attacks of heat, or odd storm trajectories. For all of you students out there listening, this is definitely a field of study that you should consider. No pressure. All right. So with that, this was all predictable. Is that correct? Yes. In essence, okay. the scientific community has, I mean, so depending on what you mean by predictable, right, we can talk about the sort of individual predictive capacity of this event. And there mm-hmm. was, you know, so we can unpack that, I think. But this broader conversation around, you know, is this shift toward ex- extremes, you know, larger, more frequent wildfires, um, shifts in the sort of timing and intensity of precipitation, um, you know, these these things that we're observing, these extremes, um, have been long predicted by the climate science community. Um, you know, we don't have crystal balls. We have scientific tools and evidence that help us understand um, what might happen in the future. Um, and for decades, my colleagues and my mentors have been studying, you know, what happens simply the physics of Earth's climate system. What Mm -hmm. happens if we warm the planet? What are those impacts? And shifting towards a more extreme climate setting, sort of average conditions shifting towards extremes is something that's been widely documented by the climate science community and anticipated. And so we have warmed our atmosphere. There's no question. Human activities have resulted in a warming, a global average warming of nearly two degrees Fahrenheit since the pre-industrial era, so the late um, 1800s. So we know that we've warmed our planet. We've observed that. We can see that. Um, We're measuring it directly, right? We're not making inferences or waving our hands. Um, We know we've warmed the planet. Mm -hmm. And we're now seeing the real world meaningful here and now impacts of that warming, right? And not only is it already warmed, we are continuing through our activities and, you know, the inability of the global political community mm-hmm. to rally behind the, a rapid reduction of emissions. We are on a trajectory towards further warming. And so really the question now is how do we ensure that we can protect communities, our environment, our economy from these extreme events, right? How do we prepare for the changes we know we've set in motion And then critically, how do we prevent it from getting worse? And we know the most critical tool in our toolbox for that part of the equation is by reducing emissions of greenhouse gases. And we need to do it sooner rather than later. Um, I like to say, particularly with the emissions of carbon dioxide, once we emit, we commit, right? We commit to it being in the atmosphere and it warms the planet. This is also true for, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, say that again, please. Yeah, so we commit. Yes. <laughs> once you emit, you commit. Um, so greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, they're mm-hmm. long lived in the atmosphere. So they're up there to trap heat for a, a longer period of time. Um, other potent greenhouse gases like methane, they also trap heat and they're they're more potent. They trap more heat. Um, they're not in the atmosphere as long. We're of course worried about all of the greenhouse gases. Um, but I think you know what you hear a lot about CO2 because once you emit, you commit. It's up there for a long time. And this is the reason why there are broad calls and conversations and uh, thinking about how is it that we actually sequester that carbon, get it out of the atmosphere, remove that commitment, lessen our commitment. And so um, that's a big part of the solutions conversation is actually achieving our policy targets require us to meet net zero, which means we actually have to um, pull carbon um, out of the atmosphere, this carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere at the same time that we reduce emissions. Sort of complicated, but um, yeah, <laughs> we need to, to really rein in our emissions, most certainly. All right. That was Dr. Heidi Roop, and she's Assistant Professor of Climate Science at the University of Minnesota. And she studies climate change impacts and adaptation and works to develop actionable steps to combat climate change. We'll hear another clip from her later on in the hour. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. We are in Fun Drive, folks. We are in Fun Drive, and I hear a knock at the door. 
<laughs> Hello. It's, oh my gosh. Is it Kevin Edge? <laughs> it is. Your, fr your friendly neighborhood development director. How are you? Oh my, I'm doing better now. Oh, I'm you're so sweet. Well, oh my goodness. It is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to have you. And we've got a new person on the controls. Actually, kind of old kind of new person. And that's Miko Tolliver, who's throwing down with all of her knowledge, making it happen in the background. So thank you to both of you. You guys are making this morning an amazing morning for this first day for me of the summer fun drive. I cannot believe we are in the summer. It's summertime. Oh my and, goodness. So and it's hot out there, huh? It's heating up. As we've been yeah. saying, fire's everywhere. So uh, fire is, summer is in full force. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, California style. California yeah. style. <laughs> I kind of wish for the San Francisco style myself. I live near the Golden Gate Bridge and it's cold and foggy. Well, rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sort of looks like, you know, my neighborhood looks like the bootleg fire from space, you know? It's just it's across the whole the whole neighborhood covered in it <laughs> like a blanket. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, lucky you. I mean, there are these strange pockets throughout California where you know we're not experiencing the 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 the, uh, the heavy uh, fire. Uh, it's not as hot. Um, it's it's really really strange. Though there so there are these microclimates that do exist, but at the same time, we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with a lot here in the state of California. We're dealing with a lot here on uh, the West Coast and uh, just in the Northern Hemisphere. We're dealing with a lot as far as this climate is concerned. Um, we're dealing with a lot as far as environmental justice is concerned. And we're trying to bring all that information to you here at A Rude Awakening, uh, this climate emergency show. And uh, of course, folks, we are back in Fun Drive again, as I already mentioned, as you probably already know when you turn the radio on this morning. And uh, Kevin, how are we doing so far? Because we're what? We started on Tuesday. Uh, let That's folks right. know how doing so far uh, in this fun drive, this summer fun drive. It's only for 10 days, so we're That's in day true. Four, right? We, right yeah, we've just begun day four, and we're about 18% of our way toward our goal of raising $300,000 uh, during mm -hmm. this drive. So we have a, we've got a, a long road ahead of us. That's that, that's that's for sure. So we really need everyone's support. This is a, a crucial time, uh, as you were saying, Sabrina, not only for the state of California but for KPFA. Um, you know, as we as we emerge uh, from slowly emerge from the pandemic, slowly get back into life. You know, we've, we're facing nonstop challenges uh, regardless. Mm -hmm. and and, uh, and KPFA is there every step of the way with our listeners, with our communities, uh, bring them up to date and, and sharing the information that you're not going to hear in any other radio station. And the only way that we can continue to do that is with listener support. So if you are able, you know, if you've done well and you feel like doing good, visit www kpfa.org make a donation today or call 1-800-439-5732 because it's true we can't do it without you uh so sabrina uh, we do have a way to go but it's great to be here i love pledge drive i love listening to the stations special programming all the new uh goodies that are available uh, on our website uh we've got new designs new t-shirts uh, a lovely enamel pin uh, that i designed with uh molly uh, one of our graphic designers, so a limited edition thing uh, at a $75 donation level. Those have been going at a merry clip. Uh, they're beautiful. And uh, wait a yes. minute, I want one. I, want I think one we could work something out. Are you serious? I want, so, I want a fancy KPFA pin, Kevin. Well, it celebrates the storytelling for social change, which is our thank you gift uh, this round to donors of any level. And that's an audio collection that has uh, great excerpts from uh, the KPFA archives. This is a wonderful interview, uh, uh, a speech with uh, Herbie Hancock, one of my favorites. I, we've talked about Herbie in the past. Uh, Mutual admiration society for him. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Bobby Seale, uh, that's that's an extraordinary speech. I've never heard him speak before, and he can really bring it. Super powerful uh, performer and speaker and, and motivator. Um, it's also got uh, Edwidge Dandekat, the Haitian a novelist and, and award-winning author. Uh, so this is a, a beautiful uh, collection of audio, and it's available to anyone at any level of donation. So you can choose to donate the $75, accept a pin and you'll get the audio pack as well. It comes in the receipt, 
once you uh, you know donate, it'll be in your email box. Just click it and have at it. It's uh, one of the great additions to the KPFA fund drives uh, yeah. of, of recent. So. Storytelling for Change also has living legend, living guitar legend, Carlos Santana. That's I mean, right. And that guy is no lightweight either. I mean, he is amazing. I mean, he lived through all of that change that was happening through the 60s and 70s, throughout the 60s and 70s. And uh, was uh, contributing his uh, his his uh, star power and, and his music and his musical might yes. to yes. all of that change. And along with uh, also in the storytelling for change, folks, there is Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin. I mean, that guy... Uh, he was the biggest heavyweight behind the March for Washington. And so many folks don't know his story and did not know his story for decades. After Myself that. included. Yeah, Myself and included. Mm -hmm. A very good uh, uh, colleague of mine actually made uh, Nancy Cates. She made the, uh, the, the amazing, the amazing documentary about his life back in 2003. And I tell you, to have any type of speech mm -hmm. uh, performed by him, put on by him, him telling the story, him telling us and, and empowering us about yes. the civil rights movement. I mean, that is a gem in and of itself. Bayard Rushton is an amazing and always will be amazing person. So yeah, that's included in the storytelling for change. So if you can go to kpfa.org, kpfa.org, you can do it securely at the website and donate whatever you can. You're going to get this amazing package, storytelling for change. These are all stories that have been told towards social change, towards empowering you as, as to how you can change history for the better. That is what this is all about. That is what KPFA is all about. That is what we are all about as far as a community. KPFA.org or 1-800-439-439. 5732. If you feel more comfortable calling our call center, we got folks there standing by 1 800 439 5732. And Kevin, tell us, yes. tell us what you have learned so far being at KPFA. It has been an amazing experience having you with us, and we are so much better at KPFA for it. How is KPFA? Oh, yeah. Your life better, huh? <laughs> it's, it's it's extraordinary. I uh, every time I turn around, Sabrina, I'm finding new things to be impressed by. Uh, we've got 99 shows on the air, and wow. it's it's extraordinary. I I, I, I can't okay. listen to them all. It's maybe one of my favorite moments or aspects about being in Pledge Drive is because while it's going on, this is finally when I have a chance to listen to the shows. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it gets me it gets me more involved in the programming. I love working with the donors. It's been very exciting. The support that we receive from everyone is beyond compare. Uh, it's been a, a great joy. And then just our staff. Again, every time I turn around, there are new people uh, that I'm being introduced to as uh, we're still under, you know, skeletal operations at the station, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, crucial staff only. Uh, so I'm not able to meet everyone at one time. In fact, you and I have never even met in person yet. And we've been working together <laughs> for quite so many months. Uh, but uh, th so uh, this slowly, slowly revealing itself to me. It's, it's, it's exciting. It's, 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 it's life changing. It's an extraordinary thing to be a part of. And what's really wonderful about it is the community. And that community is, you know, it goes both ways. So uh, the community that supports KPFA puts us in the position to to give back to the community uh, with our broadcasting and with our stations and with this uh, you know this great support staff and it, it really is a beautiful symbiotic relationship. So it's it's just been an extraordinary process and it's 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 continuing all the time. Uh, but the only way it can continue, of course, is if people donate and keep us afloat. So please visit uh, kpfa.org and make a donation today. And I'm really encouraging folks to use the website. Uh, the call center is fantastic and they, you know, they, they're, they're doing a great job, but because we don't have an open state, uh, an open station, we are having to use remote call center and it's just not the same thing. Um, and it, it, 
it can be you know time consuming and there um you know you don't have a chance to really peruse all of the great uh thank you gifts that we have available on the website so if you're listening right now online uh we are streaming worldwide uh, you can make a donation just click that button you're right there already and donate at kpfa.org it's crucial uh that the relationship between the the station and the people uh, i love it it's such a joy so yes, help, help, yes. help help keep us going. Yeah, kpfa.org, please. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. I am sad to say we do not have any callers on the line right now. This mm. is making me sad. kpfa.org. You can donate securely online, also at Twitter. KPFA or Rude KPFA. That's Rude KPFA. Uh, also on Facebook. Um, folks, we need you. We need you right now. 1 800 439 5732. Want to keep uh, sending this information out to you on the airwaves about the climate emergency. Want to keep sending this information out to you on the airwaves about environmental justice, about social justice, about all of the stories that we have to tell. Um, We're giving you the news, uh, morning and night, you know, news breaks, news headlines, news with integrity. You're getting it right here from kpfa.org. You can stream it online and and you can do it for free. A lot of these news outlets, they want to charge you. You know, New York Times, they want to charge you, you know, Mm -hmm. $4 per headline. (laughs) <laughs> per, per <laughs> it's like wait a minute no you're getting it from for free you know technically you're getting it for free and one of the wonderful from aspects KPFA, and uh, we've got amazing mm-hmm. yeah go ahead kevin I was just saying, by 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 donating to KPFA, if you are able, you're you're providing the service for those who aren't able. So it is free, um, you know, as long as there's somebody else to pick you up if you can't afford it. If you can't afford to donate right now, that's fine. We understand. Please keep listening. Please share the station with your friends. That's such wonderful support of what we're doing. But we do need financial support as well. So uh, it is free, and and we love giving it out there and being there for the community that 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 can't support us financially but if you can support us financially you're doing a good service for your friends and your neighbors so please help us uh support uh what we're doing and uh, visit kpfa.org and make a donation today yes we don't have any callers yet sabrina i don't understand (laughs) how could this be how could this be we need need somebody if we get one caller then we'll get two i'm sure so let's get that first caller on the line 1-800-439-5732 Three two one eight hundred. Hey KPFA. Mm-hmm. How have things been with you, Sabrina, since we last spoke? You know, what- yes, it has been amazing. I have learned so many amazing things. Um, still learning amazing things with the this climate show. We've got. Um, have you oh, figured it all out yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got all the answers, and let me tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw down here, and I'm gonna go up to the, to to uh, Congress and tell them what they need to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish it was that easy. Jeez, let me tell you, it is not that easy, but it's it's easy getting the information out to folks and, and letting them know and empowering them. Uh, I've done some amazing, um, amazing interviews as of late uh, with. Uh, Detroit hives, uh, they're doing amazing work uh, starting these beehives in these in the blighted communities of Detroit. So they're taking in oh. these homes and, and spaces that are blighted, been boarded up, that kind of thing. And I tell you, they, they're turning them into apiaries. That's and fantastic. Yeah, they're making beeswax and they're making uh, they're making amazing candles with the beeswax and they're, they're taking that beeswax and they're doing all kinds of great stuff with it and the, the honey and it's, um I just tried some, I, I had to get some myself and that's DetroitHives.org, DetroitHives.org and the honey is amazing and it's it's that the real stuff, it's the real <sighs> stuff. So, How fascinating. You know, yeah, it is. It is. It is. And, it, you know, Detroit is known for, as being a high crime area. Well, with these apiaries, we've got these crime fighting bees that are <laughs> basically, <laughs> they're there and they're like, hey, you know, you're not going to come over and do not cross this line, right? So, I, uh, yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you hear a house full of bees. I'd be like, no, I'm probably not going in that house. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah, you're just going to skip that one, right? So, <laughs> they've been doing amazing work, right? Uh, I got to speak with a CEO and founder 
founder of Charger Help, uh, chargerhelp.com, by Camille Terry in the last couple of weeks. And she was telling her story about how she got started and how uh, uh, she's contributing to the clean tech industry with her company that she just started, where mm-hmm. they are, you know, they're, um, excuse me, they are uh, repairing these charger stations that are uh, charging electric cars. They're charging these EVs, right? The electric vehicles. Um, Who would have thought, oh, these charger stations need to be repaired. So she started this company and it's doing really well. It's doing really, really well. I've got some upcoming uh, interviews uh, that are going to be amazing as well. Uh, Speaking to the clean clean tech industry, speaking to uh, environmental justice. And I can't wait to get that on the air, but I got to take time. I got to take time. It's mandated that I take the time to raise some funds for the station. So I am here and it is my pleasure to be here for you at 8 a.m. on Friday, asking you to make sure we can keep the lights on, even though there's a skeletal skeleton crew at KPFA. We're all still working. We're still working hard from home. It's, uh, you know, yeah. we're not at the station, yeah. but that makes it all the, all the more important. You know, we've put Thanks. so much work into developing the technology, into instituting a the infrastructure at the station. We just read it all of our boards. Now it's all digital boards, you know, no, no more analog boards for us. So that really is, a, you know, a huge investment into, into what we're able to provide and to, uh, uh, you know, how we're able to have our broadcasting continue in the face of a pandemic and in the face of all these fires and flooding and who knows what's going to hit us next. Uh, so that really is, you know, money well spent. If you donate to KPFA, you know, we put that back into the station. We put that back Back into our listeners. Uh, it's not uh, money that we build spaceships with and go flying off uh, <laughs> to the moon. You know, and this goes right. right back to the community. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's true. We need your support. We do have multiple callers on the line right now. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we yes. are, we're moving along. So uh, this is great. Uh, Sabrina, we're at like a $500 for the hour so far. Okay. So, uh, you know, we'd love to get to a thousand. I don't think that's too much to ask. Love to get more. Uh, if you can donate. Like- Yes. My heart How's was that? in my chest, folks. My heart was in my chest. I was about to cry. I was about to cry. <laughs> well, we wouldn't. <laughs> <Who could not? laughs> yeah, we don't want to have to sick the bees on you folks let's uh no, yeah, yeah please please visit kpfa.org or call 1-800-439-5732 and uh don't make sabrina cry don't make us <laughs> sick the bees <laughs> help us today <laughs> One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. I keep going back to a year and a half ago when uh, management said, "Hey, we're changing your, uh, we're going to change your show, and you're going to do this." And I was just like, "Uh, okay." And I was scared. I was apprehensive. And I tell you, it is. It has been a journey, and I've been so thankful and so happy, and just. Um, it's just been so amazing. And that's an overused word, verb, adverb, whatever. I don't care. It's been amazing. <laughs> I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> an amazing education of being able to talk to people like Dr. Heidi Rube and and you know to, to be informed, become informed about how our world will end. We won't have a world. There will be no KPFA. There will be no Rude Awakening. There will be no Kevin Hunsinger. There will be no Springer. There will be no you. There will be no you. Unless we do something about this climate emergency, one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two, and that's the information that I want to break off to you. How you can be of assistance, help, put your five cents in there, right? And throw five cents over at kpfa.org. We can do this together as a community. We can save our planet as a community. We can inform each other as a community. 1-800-439-5732. Oh my goodness, we're running over time. We got one more clip from Dr. Heidi Roop. Dr. Heidi Roop is... um, She's amazing, first and foremost. She is absolutely amazing. But she's also an assistant professor of climate science at the University of Minnesota. And she studies climate change impacts and adaptation and works to develop actionable steps to combat climate change. And we had this amazing discussion about what ha- what's been happening in Europe, what's been happening here in California, what's been happening here on the West Coast, burning up, folks dying, drowning, losing everything. 
thing in Western Europe. It's been happening all over the globe. But now that it's happening in these Western parts, these rich parts, these affluent parts of the world, everybody's on edge, right? And it's sad that it takes that. But uh, yeah, we're starting to have these necessary conversations. Hopefully, it's not too late. Let's go ahead and roll that clip, that last clip with Dr. Heidi Rupp from the University of Minnesota. Go ahead. You know, and I... I have to really would have to dig in. Um, I know this is an active conversation in the media landscape. And right. of course, Angela Merkel is coming out in defense of, you know, their efforts. You know, I think there's, you know, we're developing tools and technologies to help um, prepare to provide early warning systems. But it, this is really a complicated story of, mm-hmm. you know, having systems in place to, of course, warn residents when they're at risk. Um There is understanding the severity of an event, right? This is the the forecasting um, ability to understand you. What's how is this precipitation going to translate into to stream flow into these floods? Um, And then critically, we're we're connecting with human behavior, and and there's a similar challenge here, right? Even if you're warned, we see this with wildfires, we see this with hurricanes. Um, You know, there's a reluctance sometimes to actually heed evacuation orders and other things um, because we maybe don't believe it's going to impact us or, um, yes, in some cases, didn't have sufficient time to actually respond or didn't have access to the information. And so, um, you know, I'm not able to come on and exactly what happened in each community, but I do know, you know, there are systems in place, there are you know, for the modeling forecast, predicting the, you know, where the rain was going to fall, um, you know, and who's getting the forecast, how quickly, um, you know, it's a compli- a complicated chain of events. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when we, we zoom out to this broader conversation, you know, critically, in the United States, we we know broadly there's a disconnect between those of us who are concerned about the issue of global warming. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, a significant majority of Americans sitting around 72 percent. Um, but there's a, a minority of us who actually think that we'll be harmed personally um, by the impacts of a warming planet. That's it's closer to nationally around, you know, 43 percent. And so, you know, this is stepping a bit back from the exact specific German example, I think, to a broader a broader climate conversation. That's one that we I think is important that we have, which is that, um, yes, there's certain things we really need to think about um, in terms of how. How are people getting information? How well do our, you know, weather forecasts work? Are we getting, you know, our early warning systems sufficient? Um, you know, are, are people able to protect themselves in these uh, these extremes and when they're, you know, at direct risk? Um, and then there's this other play question of, you know, are we prepared? Um, and as individuals in as in, and as communities, are we prepared to withstand and weather? Um, the impacts of a changing climate. And in many cases, that answer is still no. Um, And if we don't feel like that we'll be harmed personally, um, that can be a real demotivator, right? How, why would I, you know, change how, you know, my community currently works um, or, you know, in the context of say people who are on a planning commission or making decisions on our behalf for how our drinking water and our storm water are managed. You know, these are, we're asking people in this, this new climate context um, to think about and plan for, in many instances, events and extremes, which they've never really experienced, right, where we have no real benchmark. And it can be um, really hard to both personally grapple with that and professionally, you know, if you're managing a community, um, to really think critically about how to incorporate new climate information, um, how to really plan and build and design robust systems for this you know, era of extremes. And I think in Germany and, you know, we can, this is a a story that we need to start telling and deeply interrogating in all of our communities, no matter their size and their shape, where they are geographically. Um, Climate change is here um, and it's here for each and every one of us. Um, And we can certainly in our own capacities, um, recognizing we all have different capacities um, to, you know, protect ourselves and our families. But I think really critically hold those that are making decisions on our behalf accountable for ensuring that they are considering climate change and this climate changed future. 
when they are designing and making priority investments for our communities, whether that's our stormwater infrastructure, whether that's how and where trees are being planted to provide shade and cover to help communities cope with extreme heat. You know, it's sort of, there's, it, there's an every action matters and a, you know, an all hands on deck kind of situation that we're in. Um, and, and this is, I think, the real question around preparation is how can we prepare our communities for these extremes? And that, I think, is one. That's a space where I spend a lot of my time, um, mm -hmm. both in research space and, and, and talking critically with decision makers, elected officials, planning boards, um, companies, thinking about what, does, what are the implications? How do we protect people? How do we protect our livelihoods, our jobs, our ways of being, our cultures? Um, these are all under threat as the planet continues to warm. My goodness, my goodness. Again, Dr. Heidi Group. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's bleak. It's A shocking bleak. awakening. <laughs> have, yeah. yeah, it's bleak. <laughs> It is scary, scary bleak. Um, she is amazing. She is doing amazing work. Again, that's Dr. Heidi Roop, Assistant Professor of Climate Science at the University of Minnesota. She studies climate change impacts and adaptation and works to develop actionable steps to combat climate change, assuming it's not too late. And if you didn't hear or feel the bleakness of our situation here on this planet in her voice, then hear it in mind right now. That is what this show is about. It's about the climate emergency. It's about how we're all going to burn up and die <laughs> or drown or all of the above. Unless yeah. <laughs> if we could combine the two, it'd be really nice. Like if we catch ourselves on fire and then we get a flood to like, you know, wipe out the fire. That would be nice. <laughs> That's one solution popular. <laughs> Give me a fake <laughs> You know, as we're laughing here, we're just burning up. We're just, we're just gonna, you know, we're going to laugh and, and cry and laugh while we're yeah. burning. Yeah, well, well how, burn, how about we start well. burning up the phone lines, listeners? <laughs> <laughs> We've got some space available. We have been getting some wonderful yeah, donations this space, morning. But yeah, that is what it's up. That's what yeah. it's 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org. It's simple. It's safe. 1-800-439-5732. But we prefer kpfa.org. The sky is literally falling. But we want to try to keep a roof over our heads at KPFA. So we need your help right now. Um, this is the first week of Fun Drive. We've got one more week to go. This is supposed to go on until next Friday. Is that correct? That's Kevin right. H. That's right. Unless, you know, um, we wouldn't be opposed if somebody donated, say, $200,000 right now. We'd stop this pledge drive immediately you know drop me a line at development at kpfa.org and we can set that up for you you know a, a qualified charitable donation an ira rollover something like that we'll make it work for you i'll i'll work with your accountants you know with your financial advisor we can make that happen how about it who, who, who's got a couple extra hundred thousand dollars that they don't want to put into a, a ticket to the moon you know um mm -hmm. donate to kpfa uh, help us help us stay around or ten dollars a month like our our donor in Oakland, I gave $10 a month and selected that storytelling for social change enamel pin and sticker and said, thank you for bringing truth to light. We had a oh. donor in Visalia uh, that donated oh, $120 and said, thank you for keeping the station alive and on air. And there was a donor in San Francisco said, thank you, Sabrina Jacobs and everyone else at KPFA. Oh. So, oh. you know, we're real people doing a real job. And, uh, and when you donate to us, uh, we 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 feel that, and, and it helps. It really truly helps. So visit kpfa.org, donate today, give what you can, or call one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. I think we've got a pin left for you. I think there's still still some in the in the. <laughs> I want one too. You're gonna get one. Oh, we'll make yeah. that happen. We'll make that happen. I want a pin too. I, I really, I seriously want one. I'm, I'm serious about this. I will, I will find you, Kevin. They're cool. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at them. 
I will mask up and step outside the door and find Kevin H so I can get my KPFA pin. You got Thank it. You you got it. You know, we're 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 low. We're joking around. I can't even talk. Jeez, we're joking around. We're laughing um, because we're trying to keep from crying. This is serious. Okay, this is serious. This is serious. This is serious. We will die. People have died. People are dying. Right, because. They just didn't quite heed the warning. I mean, just like Dr. Heidi Roop said, you know, like the warnings were going out, but folks just didn't want to believe it, you know, because they're apprehensive about believing what about what's happening with this climate emergency. And I'm here to drive it home into your head, unfortunately, and into your hearts that this is serious. We are are going to die. There will be no KPFA to donate to if you don't pay attention to what's happening right now. If you don't pay attention to the knowledge I'm trying to throw out there to you, dear listener, about this climate emergency. 1-800-439-5732. It has been a fascinating education Mm -hmm. and a terrifying one all at the same time. So yeah, I'm going to laugh with Kevin H. I'm also going to cry with Kevin H. I'm going to laugh with you, dear listener. I'm also going to cry with you, dear listener. But we got to make sure we have a planet and a place to do all that laughing and crying. True, true. 1-800-439-5732. And folks, I, I know the folks that have been listening to the show for at least the last six months. I was whining and wanting to get this this new piece of equipment. Well, I've got it. I've got it. But I also got to get help with it. 1-800-439-5732. I got to get some solid help, a solid producer that can help me uh Get this thing going so that I can start taking calls from you because I want to hear from you. I actually get tired of hearing my own voice, if you can believe that. 1-800-439-5732. I want to start taking calls from you. I want to start doing a call-in show so that I can hear you weigh in about this climate emergency so that you can hear each other weighing in about what we all can do as a community. As Dr. Root. I'm so sorry. As Dr. Roop said, every action matters and all hands on deck. And and it couldn't be more apt for climate and it couldn't be more apt for what's happening with KPFA and our listeners' support. You know, we do need that support and every action matters from our listeners because it does uh, resonate with us. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, it's totally fine. Brother Kevin, Brother K. Yeah, I think we're going to call, can we call you that instead of Kevin H? I like that. Call me Brother K? Sure. You can call me whatever you want. (laughs) I love your voice. I love the sound of your voice. You can, you can say anything at all. You know, I can't imagine that you'd get sick of hearing yourself talk. If if I had a voice like that, I would just stand inside all day and la 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 la. la. (laughs) You are, you are a gift to the community. Thank you so much. And and, 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 and it is perfect because, you know, it's just such uh, it's, it's hard news to take. You know, it's hard. Your show is a hard show to listen to because it's not it's it's not always uplifting. It's not always positive, but it's news that we need to hear. And um, and thankfully, you've got those just the dulcet tones, lovely voice. Uh, you make you make it all you make it all sound kind of OK, Sabrina. So thank you. <laughs> But it's not, folks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 1-800-439-5732. KPFA.org. KPFA.org. I know the inclination is to go old school and pick up the phone and dial the number and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, we want to push everybody to the to the online world, to the www world, to the world where you can give securely online kpfa.org um yeah it's Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's ahead. just very, it's very, very true. You know, by donating online at kpfa.org, you not only be saving yourself time, but you'll save KPFA money. I mean, from call centers that charge a dollar a minute. 
to our staff, right. supplies, postage that's necessary to mail pledge forms, the data entry that's required to enter the checks into our database, banking fees, processing fees. It's just a fact. Checks cost us cash. And your support is so crucial to, K- crucial to KPFA and our survival. And the only way you can really maximize the generosity of these gifts is to donate to KPFA online at kpfa.org. As you were saying, it's swift, sleek, and secure. Um, and it's really the best option when every penny counts and every penny does count. So thank you for your support so far. And we've been getting support from all over. That's what's really exciting to, you know, to see when people use the uh, donate online because they're listening and streaming listeners. So we've been getting donations this morning from Philadelphia, from, uh, as I mentioned, Vesalia, from McMinnville, Oregon. Uh, it's my favorite wine country uh, on earth. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful place there. So thank you. Thank you for coming through uh, from all over this country, from all over the world uh, by listening to KPFA streaming. We've got 280 streamers listening right now and who knows where, probably all over the globe. So they're already online. They're already at kpfa.org. So just click that donate button, make a contribution today. Every penny counts. And like Dr. Roop saying, every action matters. So thank you for that. Yes. It, yeah. Dr. Heidi Roop, she, she was amazing. She was amazing. Now, And, and that's not to, to downplay all the other scientists that I've had over the last year and a half. They have all been amazing. And I lean more towards science because um, the, the little sample, uh, the sample, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, the sample that I took uh, to ask folks, hey, you know, what would you like to hear? Yeah, the sample survey. Yeah, kind of sort of just kind of made a few calls here and there like what do you like to hear what do you like to hear and they're like hey we like the science you know we <laughs> want to hear the science you know we want to hear you know the empirical evidence whatever and it's like okay yeah all right so i try to lean more towards the science because those are facts sure right those are facts those are real facts it's not conjecture it's not embellishment it's not exaggeration it's not me pulling it out of my you know what mm-hmm Right. It's not just what I think. It's not my opinion. It's not Kevin H's opinion. It's the truth about what is happening. Percentages, numbers, statistics, all that information is coming from these scientists. And Dr. Heidi Rupp is one of those folks. And one of the little catchphrases that she uh, she said there was once you emit, you commit. Okay, so once mm. those greenhouse gases are out there, once those GHGs are out there, once that carbon dioxide is out there, we are committed as a society, as a community, as a world, as a global village to it being out there. We got to do something about it. We got to make sure we are putting it back, you know, putting it back into the, the, the into nature, how we're going to sequester all of that carbon, right? Yeah. All of that, all of that. And I just learned that in the last year and a half from doing this show. I just learned that because I was given the opportunity to learn it through KPFA. And if KPFA doesn't exist, you're not going to have the opportunity to learn anything about this go. climate emergency. Right? There you go. There you go. There you go. Learn it. 1-800-439-5732. We got, oh goodness, we've got three minutes left, we folks. Got, and and we're really close to our thousand dollar goal for the for the hour. So uh, we're at like nine uh, eight hundred and ninety two dollars. So oh well, we can God. get there. You know, we got a few minutes to go, and I'd love to see us get there. So please, folks, visit kpfa.org, make a donation. It'll be instantaneous, and we'll see it and we'll thank you. We'll even say your name on air if you'd like. Write us a comment. Maybe we'll read it if it's something nice. Uh, 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org. Sabrina, it's always a joy to be with you. Um, And uh, I just really enjoy this time together. So, uh, you know, thank you for having me on again. And thank you for doing everything that you've been doing for KPFA. Uh, This show, Box of Toys, you know, the interviews with, uh, you know, you're you're just a wonderful part of this. And I think that uh, you're just one of the key elements that that really make the the station uh, so joyful to be a part of. And uh, and I just really I'm, I'm really glad to see people coming through to support you. And I'd love to see more people call in and support this show and to support what you're doing because you're doing a great 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 service thank you oh, 1-800-439-5732 that's right or kpfa.org kevin you have been 
an angel, <laughs> a God sin, a something sin, and all of the above sin. You have just you just materialized out of nowhere, as far as I'm concerned, and it's just been an absolute addition to KPFA. A joy right. to work. I look forward to doing fun drive. I used to get scared. I used to get really, really scared. Like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. But it's now it's like, hey, I get to work with Kevin H. He's going to uh, make it easier to, uh, you know, impart this difficult knowledge onto folks. <laughs> You're this buffer. You're this buffer that I needed. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully a little a little comic relief, you know, but that's the best I can offer. But you're giving the real you're you're doing the real deal, Sabrina. And a lot of love, man. There's a lot of love going on here, and not to downplay, not to downplay uh, the uh, the work that uh, Mitch and I did back in the day. Um, but uh, he had to spin off and you know keep his thing going. And uh, Kevin H has stepped in as development director and has been doing an amazing job. Thank we you. are better. For it at KPFA. We're coming down to the wire here. We got about 30 seconds left. 1 800 439 5732 or kpfa.org. If you can't do it this week, I'll be on next week. Next week at 8 o'clock, A Root Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs with Kevin H. KPFA is also heard on KPFB 89.3 FM in Berkeley, KFCF 88.1 FM in Fresno. We love you, KFCF. K248BR 97.5 FM in Santa Cruz and online all the time at kpfa.org. RG. Democracy Now! is coming up next. Thank you, Miko Tolliver, for throwing down this morning. Love you. Appreciate you. Please give kpfa.org.